Hey, good morning, 8th and 9th grade boys. This is Mr. J here, and what a great morning it is to be alive. And I was looking at Psalm 3, which is our new assignment. We're going to read Psalm 3, and we're going to ask those questions. There's five questions, which is, what do you like about the, the chapter? What do you not like about the chapter? Where do you see God working in the chapter? What do you not understand in the chapter? And what can you apply to your life? From the chapter. Alright. I pray that all of y'all are well. I pray that you're holding fast. In the gospel. And, and not spending all your time. Uh, on entertainment. And and not putting your mind. To the plow. Which is putting your mind. In the word of God. Uh, focusing on the word of God. Learning the word of God. And memorizing. What, what the Lord wants you to, to marinate on. Marinate on his word. And so. We're going to look at Psalm 3, and I think it's really good because it says a morning psalm, and it's, it's in the morning, and I know it's on a Tuesday, but y'all are going to have today, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, so you have four days to get this done, which I don't think will be a problem. I'm going to read through the chapter, and I have Charles Spurgeon's commentary here, which is only two pages long on Psalm 3, so it's not very long at all, and I want y'all to have a listen. Please, when excuse me, when you do your assignment, please write down that you watch this video, okay? Because I want I don't want you to look at this and then know the assignment and then leave the video. So, Psalm three. Let's have time in prayer and then I'll get on it. And I'm not gonna keep you long, all right? Uh, Father, I thank you for these young men, Lord. I pray your blessings on them. I pray that they're doing well. That their their minds are sound. And you, that they don't have a spirit of fear or timidity, but of sound mind, of, of power that comes from your spirit, and of love, self-discipline. Lord, I pray that you would give them strength to overcome any obstacles they're facing, that they find their identity in you, that they would rise up and be men who seek after your heart, Lord. Seek after you and, and are great examples to the world of what it looks like to be a gentle gentle man, what it looks like to be a kind man, what it looks like to be a, a pure and holy man, that they would walk in your ways, Father. Bind the evil one from them, and I pray as we get into your word that, that our eyes would be open, that our hearts would be receptive of what you have to say. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, so help us, Father, I pray. For Christ's sake and name, amen. Amen. So let's look at Psalm chapter 3. So open up your Bibles to Psalm chapter 3 as I read through it. Just follow with me. Psalm chapter 3, <clears throat> Psalm of David, when he fled from his son Absalom. <clears throat> o Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. So Absalom was David's, I don't know if it, his, if it was his oldest son, but Absalom tried to take the throne on his own. Basically rebelled against David and got a group of people to go against David, but <clears throat> it doesn't work out too well with him for him, for Absalom. But David's in the situation where his own son's trying to dethrone him. In verse 3, But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. That David's being uh, sought after and and really trying to be killed he had gone through a situation with Saul well, Saul was one of the first kings I think the first king of Israel and Saul hated David and those times where David had to flee from Saul and here we see here we're seeing that David is being sought after and his son is is trying to dethrone him and he's still able to sleep well because the Lord sustains him I will not fear the tens of thousands verse 6 I will not fear the ten, tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. So it must have been a lot of people coming after David. Absalom must have had a lot of people on his side to go against David and and to get David uh, killed or, or dethroned. So let's take a look at what Spurgeon has to say about it. And I know, Dylan, one time you said um, it was hard for you to understand Spurgeon. That's true. 
because I, it's hard for me to understand at times. So if if you don't understand this, then leave a comment or send me a message uh, asking me what it means and I can investigate a little bit more. All right. Psalm 3, a Psalm of David. When he fled from Absalom, his son, you will remember the sad story of David's fight from his own palace when in the dead of the night he forded the brook Kedron and went with a few faithful followers to hide himself for a while from the fury of his rebellious son. Remember that David in this was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He too fled. He too passed over the brook Kedron when his own people were in rebellion against him. And with a feeble band of followers, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He too drank of the brook by the way, and therefore doth he lift up the head by very many expositors. This is entitled the morning hymn. May we ever wake with holy confidence in our hearts and a song upon our lips. Amen. This psalm may be divided into four parts of two verses each. In the first two verses, you have David making a complaint to God concerning his enemies. He then declares his confidence in the Lord, verses 3-4, through four, sings of his safety in sleep, verses 5-6, through six, and strengthens himself for future conflict, verses 7-8. through eight. Verse 1, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Troubles always come in flocks. Sorrow hath a numerous family. Many are they that rise up against me. The legions of our sins, the armies of friends, uh, Finn, I think it says Finn's, the crowd of bodily pains, the host of spiritual sorrows, and all the allies of death and hell set themselves in battle against the Son of Man. How slippery and deceitful are, are the many, and how little fidelity and consistency is to be found among men. David had had the hearts of his subjects as much as ever any king had, and yet now of a sudden he had lost them. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. David complains before his loving God of the worst weapon of his enemy's attacks and the bitterest drop of his distresses. This was the unkindest cut of all when they declared that his God had forsaken him. Yet David knew in his own conscience that he had given them some ground for this exclamation for he had committed sin against God in the very light of day. You know, the sin against Bathsheba. If all the trials which come from heaven, all the temptations which ascend from hell, and all the crosses which arise from earth could be mixed and pressed together, they would not make a trial so terrible as that which is contained in this verse. It is the most bitter of all afflictions to be led to fear that there is no help for us in God. And yet remember our most blessed Savior had to endure this in the deepest degree when he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We learned earlier that David says that, too, in the scripture. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And we're, So we're seeing a connection between Jesus and David, as David is part of the lineage of Jesus. He He's mentioned in, I think, in Matthew chapter 1, or where, where it goes through the lineage of Christ. David's mentioned because he's in that lineage. So we're seeing a foreshadowing of David and a fulfillment in Christ. When the believer questions the power of God or his interest in it, his joy gushes out as blood out of a broken vein. This verse is a sore stab indeed. A child of God startles at the very thought of despairing of helping God. <clears throat> you cannot vex him with anything so much as if you offer to persuade him. There is no help for him in God. The word occurs 73 times in the psalm, Selah. This word occurs 73 times in the Psalms and three times in the book of Habakkuk. Thou art my glory. Oh, for grace to see our future glory amid present shame. There is a present glory in our afflictions if we could but discern it. For it is no mean thing to have fellowship of Christ in his sufferings. David was honored when he made the ascent of Olivia, weeping with his head covered, for he was in awe. This made like unto his Lord. May we learn in this respect to glory and tribulations also. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. We're at verse 4. When prayer leads the van, in due time deliverance brings up the rear. He heard me. I have often heard persons say in prayer, Thou art a prayer, prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. But the expression contains a superfluity. Since for God to hear is, according to Scripture, the same thing as to answer. In verse 5, I laid 
me down and slept. There is a sleep of presumption. God, deliver us from it. There is a sleep of holy confidence. God, help us to close our eyes. Truly, it must have been a soft pillow indeed that could make David forget his danger. Who then has such a disloyal army at his back hunting of him? Yea, so transcendent is the influence of this peace that it can make the creature lie down as cheerfully to sleep in the grave as on the softest bed. You will say that child is willing that calls to be put to bed. Some of the saints have desired God to lay them at rest in their beds of dust, and that not in a pet and discontent with their present trouble, as Job did, but from a sweet sense of this peace in their bosoms. Now let the servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, was a swain-like song of old Simeon. A good conscience can sleep in the mouth of a cannon. Grace is a Christian's coat of mail, which fears not the arrow or bullet. The Lord sustains me in the scripture. It would not be unprofitable to consider the sustaining power manifested in us while while we lie asleep. In the flowing of the blood, ha heaving of the lung, etc., in the body, and the con continuance of mental facilities while the image of death is upon us. Christ, by the words of this verse, signifies his death and burial. Martin Luther I will not be afraid of the ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Verse 6. The psalmist will trust despite appearances. He will not be afraid, though ten thousands of people have set themselves against him round about. Weak believers are now ready to make excuses for us, and we are only too, too ready to make them for ourselves. Instead of rising up above the weakness of the flesh, we take refuge under it and use it as an excuse. To trust only when appearances are favorable is to sail only with the wind and tide to believe only when we can see. Oh, let us follow the example of the psalmist and seek the unreservedness of faith which will enable us to trust God, come what will. Man, it makes no matter what our enemies be, though for number, legions, for power, principalities, for subtlety, serpents, for cruelty, dragons, for vantage of place, a prince of the air for maliciousness, spiritual wickedness. Stronger is he that is in us than, than they who are against us. Nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We shall be more than conquerors. Verse 8, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. This verse contains the sum and substance of Calvinistic doctrine. Search scripture through, and you must, if you read it with a candid mind, be persuaded that the doctrine of salvation by grace alone is the greatest doctrine of the word of God, is a great doctrine of the word of God. This is a point concerning which we are daily fighting. Our opponents say salvation belonging to the free will of man, if not to man's merit, yet at least to man's will. But we hold and teach that salvation from first to last and every iota of it belongs to the most high God. It is God that chooses his people. He calls them by his grace. He quickens them by his spirit and keeps them by his power. It is not of man, neither by man, not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. May we all learn this truth exper experimentally, for our proud flesh and blood will never permit us to learn it in any other way. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Those Christians of the first magnitude of whom the world was not worthy had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings. They were sawn asunder. They were slain with a sword. Hebrews eleven thirty six to 37 What? And were all these during the time of their sufferings blessed? A carnal man would think, if this be to be blessed, God deliver him from it. But however sense would give their vote, our Savior Christ pronounced the godly man blessed, though a mourner, Though a martyr, yet blessed. Job on the dung hill was blessed, Job. The saints are blessed when they are cursed. The saints, though they are bruised, yet they are blessed. And all these sayings come from different guys. I didn't say all the names because I would have just kept saying different names. But it was a mixture, combination of a lot of guys back in Charles Spurgeon's day. But what what a powerful, what a powerful chapter that we're learning from. Is David a real person running from his own son? Is trying to rebel against him and we see the connection that Spurgeon has with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane people rebelling against him Judas turning against him 
Uh, the Pharisees have an opportunity to try to kill Jesus, and we know eventually that they do. So Jesus, we, we can learn a lot from our Savior through this passage of what he's gone through for us. And that suffering for the believer is something blessed because when you suffer for the Lord, you, you realize that this world is fading away and you're left with what's real. All the fake stuff goes through your fingers and what's real stays and you have it and it's there and you can trust in God. And and so the, the saints are blessed. And we learn about persecution and through other books that we read and it's real for Christians, but they look to God and that was their strength, just as David looked to God. So I hope this encourages y'all. Get those questions done and two answers or two sentences per answer. Send it to justinwaters55 at com. And God bless you. And if you got any questions, let me know, all right? Send me a text or something, all right? Grace and peace. Have a good day, good week.